Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. I just want to start off by saying thanks to Eastwood because now we have a welder that we can do all of our welding jobs with. And also a big thanks to Gary, who's been super helpful sharing his 30 years of welding knowledge with me in a couple of hours. I've started a few projects and we've got many more to come, but this should be fun guys, so stay tuned. Let's get into it. We're an Australian family that set off on an adventure of a lifetime. We hope these little videos make you smile and inspire you to chase your dreams. Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. Okay, this is some of Lee's practice work. Oh, look, I don't like holding this up, guys. This is like day one, my first attempt at ever welding. Pretty good. Uh, we'll see. Few days there, but uh. Bloody seagulls, I tell ya. <laughs> they're everywhere. Anyway, this is aluminium. This is the first time we've ever welded aluminium. <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, his teacher says it's going pretty well. He's a pretty good student. So, thanks again, Gary, for showing him the works, the ropes. Yeah, right, that one. <laughs> when I first got here, I could do breathe. That's embarrassing. But I have improved. I've been doing them every day. And I've now, I just did eight for the first time. I usually do seven. <laughs> Today is Taj's birthday. So instead of boat work, we all headed to the beach. I can't believe it was 19 years ago that you made my dream come true of being a mum the only thing that I ever wanted to be. You are talented and wise beyond your years. Thank you for being you and for bringing joy and more love than I could ever imagine into our lives. Some of you would remember that little boy with the long hair all those years ago. Today, that little boy is turning 19 and grown into such an incredible man. You have such a bright future ahead of you and we are super proud and can't wait to continue adventuring as soon as we get back in the water. Off the for no icing. He's turning 19, we got no candles. <laughs> we sang a beautiful happy birthday. Happy birthday, 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 birthday. Anyway, here's our homemade ice cream. Hip, hip. We love you. Alright guys, so we're in the forward locker today. This is Bella's bedroom and underneath her bed is this big uh, forward locker. So we store our sails under here. There's bits and pieces, spare blocks and just certain things that you need. There's spare fiberglass, stainless steel, whatever gets thrown in this front locker over the years is there. We've sort of cleaned it up a little bit today. We've thrown out a lot of bits and pieces that were from old units and they're just, we don't no longer need on this boat. Quite a fair bit actually. While I'm in here, the main reason was to get in and put our valve back on. So this is the exit valve for the forward head. So we've cleaned that up. We've got a new skin fitting coming. So I'm just going to put this on here with a bit of sealant, bolt it down. And then once we get our new skin fittings, I can screw them on from the outside. I'll re-plumb this back up. There is a little bit of a dip in the line. So before it exits, it actually comes down and then back up. So I'm going to just sort of change the level so there's no dip in the line so we don't get any blockages. It's not a biggie. Get into it. Get my assistant ready.
there we go she's all plumbed up ready for use got the grounding wire back on and she's all tightened up two pipe clips as anything below waterline as we know you put two on and uh yeah another another job done well you can't quite see it i've just sort of covered it back in but i've put some clips on it and held it so that there's actually one even flow it was actually dipping down to the floor and then coming back up to the seacock now it's got a nice even flow out to eliminate any blockages so she's all looking good we still do have an elbow there obviously if you can avoid it it is good just to have a straight but it's not the end of the world we'll live with that get our spinnaker back in here hopefully not for too much longer we're back out on the water before we know it oh did you want to put your toys away darling <laughs> Can't leave them out when the camera's gone, come on. Every boat loves these. They're actually shock absorbers. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> They're actually springers for the uh, for when we moor. Good solid one. Really enjoying yourself there, Captain. <laughs> I'm gonna move on to my next job tonight, but I gotta get Bella's bed back together so she can go to sleep. Cleaned up in here, got a few for your spares down the side here. Easy access to them. Got our two spinnakers under here and some spare sails and a little bit of room here which will fill up pretty quick. But that's our Bella's room and her forward locker all plumbed up, ready to roll. 46 days to go guys, one through hull at a time. So the next job we're going to install the sea chest. So we had to get it from up on the deck which is a two person job and pass it in to Lee in the engine bay, who was waiting there patiently, ready to install. All right guys, so we're just gonna do a little bit of a dry fit here and I've got a cut. We have bolts up here that hold the bracket. Um, so this is all changed because I've re-altered, well, re-engineered the, the intake here. So it's solid now. It's a whole new bronze setup as opposed to the rusty old stainless one we had. I still got to tidy up down there so don't look too close. Just put the sea chest on first. We'll see how this fits. Well, I'll take that as a as a win, I think. Perfect. I'm sure how that would go, but spot on. So that now will be joined with some wet exhaust hose. So that's a three and a half inch hose with two clips on the top, two clips on the bottom, and then we've got a bracket here, which is out there. Pass me that bracket. Oh, hang on. Looks like there might be the first welding job coming up here. What have we got here? So this, I'm not gonna adjust any of that because that all fits. So that'll all be bolted onto there. But our box height is slightly different. We are now, Whatever that is, another 70 mil higher, maybe three inches. I'm not sure, I'll have to measure that. So I'm gonna cut this and re-weld that so it holds on. I think the easiest way for this, I might just cut this and sleeve it and then I can double check it. I'll probably leave maybe another 10 mil gap in between the two fittings so it's got just a little bit of room for the boat moving and whatever. Okay, what's the first job? I'll measure this up and um, we might pull out the welder. This welding game, you know, I've seen people on YouTube do it and being a YouTuber myself, I'm sure I can do it. I have a suggestion. Why don't you get that guy over there to do it for you and you watch it? <laughs> what? You have little faith, mate. If the weld fails and this falls off, the worst that can happen is the boat sinks. That's not that bad. Yeah, so... We all know how to swim, Taj. So this is the bracket to the sea chest. It's 75 millimetres too long. So about two and a half inches, I think, for the Americans. I'm just gonna remove this piece here, which I've just cut. And then that's gonna allow us to bring that down, like so. I'm actually gonna put that in there just to keep it nice and straight, and then weld a bead around that. I'll clean all this up, and then we'll uh, get ready to weld if this wind drops off. We need the wind to drop out so it doesn't disturb the gas around the weld, but. Not too bad, but we'll see.
a few seagulls around here today. Yeah, whole swarm of them. <laughs> His first job. Uh, All right. Don't be too hard on him, everyone. <laughs> it's one thing for sure. It can only get better. You must think it looks alright too, otherwise you wouldn't let me film. No, it's not the best. It's far from it, but it's a start. Well, looks no different to the guys that welded beforehand. It is hard though. I can do a nice flat weld, but going around was really challenging. <laughs> Show me the round. Thought you did alright, there's no holes. There's no holes. Not, not real consistent, but there's enough on there to hold it. Is that a vital part of our boat? Oh look if it breaks we'll sink. No, you want me to go I got, <laughs> got, a, got a little way to go before I hit the rails. Alright guys, I got my little bit of pipe I ordered that's arrived and that allows me to put our sea chest back together now. As we know I've redone that whole section here. Through hole set up here which is super solid. We've got a lot of loose cables and we've got an earthing system over here that gets dripped on. It's all got corroded terminals. This here, which I don't know what it was for, but I'm going to make, I'm going to put like a little piece of timber in here, and then I've got a little Dakota lithium battery, which will be powering the genset. Big old lead acid battery tray. Uh, remove these little straps that were for the battery, and I'm going to put a, just a box. I'm actually going to use this container that fits snug in there, and that is going to be like a little wet box where I can put oils and just all sorts of things like that. So this area is just going to get a little tidy up, get this sea chest back in and tidy our plumbing situation up. There's a few old plastic fittings on the sea chest, so I've got the fittings now to replace them. And uh, we'll tidy all that up and get this little section back in order. Lee is redirecting some of the stuff that's on our ch sea chest to different locations. So he's just removing some of the pipes that we're already attaching. Because today, this is going to be put in place. We have our sea chest here. It's a little easier to work on it out here. But what I'm going to do is, I don't like plastic fittings. So I'm going to remove these three fittings and I'm going to replace them with some bronze ones like so. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to run some bonding wires around while it's out here and that'll be part of the wiring clean up in there too. Looks like this one was a new valve. Looks like it's been leaking a little bit there. So I might give that just a half a turn, tighten up that. All right, so there is usually a lot that goes into a job and it's not always just the main part of the job that's getting done that we show you. We usually just show what Lee's doing. Even though they're not big jobs and big tasks, there is a lot going on. Taz is just using some stainless cleaner to get all of some rust off of these clamps. And this is just one example of all the things that get done behind the scenes. We don't always film these little jobs, but they are getting done and everybody is helping along the way. Okay, so I've got 10 mil, I've got to get 10 mil lower. That lines up, that's all good. Looks like he hasn't stuffed up anywhere, it fits in nicely. Yep. So he's just doing a dry fit, would you call this a dry fit honey? This is a dry fit. This is a dry fit. Alright, so that's good. My water level of the sea chest is around here somewhere, so more of my valves are still under, even though I've brought that up a little bit. And the heat gun that was inside the area, a lot easier. Here's our 
bit of three and a half inch exhaust uh, hose that we're using and we're going to put two clips on the bottom two clips on the top put it all together and we should be back in action guys so i've just marked out roughly where i want my clips to sit so there's our nipple hanging out here your what? Well, our barbed joiner. Your nipple? Yeah. We're going to put that over the top. So it's going to have two clips there. And there's going to be two clips holding the sea chest. And then it's bolted. Plus it's got like a 10 mil gap for any movement in the boat. So it's not the sea chest on top of the actual unit itself. So slide that on something like that. And I should be able to... There we go. We ought to reach that with the with the socket. Once we set that up, they're all they're nice and tight. These clips, especially, you want them hard to put on because there's not as much tightening with them, but they are a solid clip, so they're perfect. They're really tight to get on. So we know we've got the sizing spot on. It's just a matter of putting our sea chest on there and tightening that up, and we are good to roll tidied up, moved all these wires, now they're back under here. Did we show you that? Oh, I got footage of it. Got footage of it anyway. All those wires that were getting salt water dripping on them if we do open anything up. We're to tidying up to do once we get all these pipes onto here, trim it all up. And uh, it's nice and tidy down there now. We know we're not going to sink with that. That scared me like I always say. Such a big hole to have in a boat and I just wanted to make sure that was 300% right. We can. Your head, huh? just, uh, forward, slope, just hold it there for a second. Just hold it there for a second. Got about a five mil gap there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay guys, I've plumbed it all up, wired it up, and we're just awaiting two fittings to finalise that, and we are complete on the sea chest. We have two problems out here today. We have a line here, which needs to be joined. That's the first problem. Second problem is I've never done this before. So it's just a, a joining splice, because this knot won't go through. So, well, it won't go through at all. I've never been able to use this cover properly on the boom and it's designed just as a one-way cord so the, the cord to be continuous so you can just pull the cover out pull the cover in but someone along the way decided to chop this line and in a real random spot we're gonna have to join it so we can get our cover working correctly new mainsail new boom vang sometimes us youtubers need to look up youtube too who have i got here premium ropes they're about to show me how to do a splice. Let's see if I can pull it off. Okay. Going to make an incision here. I don't know if this is the right sort of rope to be doing this. Get that last little bit inside the case, like so. There we have it. You did it. We've got an endless piece of rope now. Can't even see the joint. Perfecto. There we have it, guys. Quick YouTube video, and uh, you've got yourself a rope that's uh, joined together. Bloody YouTube, how good is this, eh? I've got one more to do. That's it for this one. You all know what to do. Please like and subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.